Now the last thing that we need to do within our database wrapper um, is the uh, have the ability to basically insert and update records that already exist. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is the insert method. Uh, that's to basically going to take the name of the table and the list of the fields that are required to be inserted uh, by field name and value. What we're then going to do is we're going to generate a list of question marks which will go into our query and we'll be able to sanitize them using our query method. So really we don't need to actually query anything here uh, in terms of building up a building up um, the query functionality because we've already got that in our database. We, we have all the functionality we need. All we need to do is define the method and how the data is handled and passed through to the methods. And it will be more or less the same for the update method as well. Now, the insert and the update methods are very similar in the way that they work, but the code does change slightly. So we're going to create two different methods uh, just not to confuse things. So the first thing that we'll make is the insert method. So public function insert. And what kind of data are we going to want to pass to this? Let's take a look at how we might want to actually build this up. So we're going to want an array of data. Uh, we're also going to want to define which table we want to insert into. So let's pull this down and make this a little bit easier. So I'm going to say I want the username to be Dale. And I want the password to be password. I want the salt to be salt um, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to leave it at that for now um, and we will we'll, we'll not bother you know defining all of the fields that we need to insert in our database. So we're going to build up this functionality, run it and then check that all of the relevant data was inserted um, with our method. So let's go ahead and start to build this up. We know now that we want to define the table and the fields that we want to insert. And of course, that's going to be an array of data. So what we're going to want to do is check if fields, uh, if fields has actually any data. So if count fields. Uh, the last thing we want to do is return false. So if, um, if we do have data in our fields array, what do we want to do? The first thing we want to do is create a few variables at the top of this just to define what you know things we need. The keys of the of the array, because the keys of the array here are the fields that we want to update, remember. So we want to say keys equals array keys function and then pass in that array. We also want to set values to null. That's just a basically a, a variable that's going to keep track of um, of the, the the question marks that we want to put inside of our inside of our, uh, our query, and then we want x to be one. That's just going to be a counter that we're going to use in a moment. So now what we're going to do is build up um, the query that we're going to use to insert. So let's take a look at that first of all. Um, so when we insert, we use insert into. Um, a specific table, so let's just say users, um, and then here we define the list of the field names. So in this case, this is going to be um, the keys uh, that we've defined in here. So this will be the keys. So this will ordinarily look like username, password, salt, like that. So that's what it will look like, but we don't want to do that because we are defining the fields that we want to update here. So let's take a look at how this might work. Let's concatenate on something into here. Now this can confuse, so it's it's one of them things that you just need to get your head around. What we're going to do is we always know that there's going to be a back tick here and a back tick here because we define the fields that we want to insert to usually with back ticks. You don't need to, uh, but let's do that do this anyway. And then we want to implode the keys of the array. Now what this will do is it will take the keys of the array and create it into a string with a separator. Now this separator is going to be a backtick, a comma and a backtick. So what actually happens here? Well, when we implode it, we start off with a backtick and we end with a backtick. We always know that this will is how the what will look inside of the brackets will look like. We then implode by these with each value in between. So I think the best way to sort of visualize this is just to output the SQL that we've we've created. So now that's what our data is going to look like. This is our first backtick that we created before the implode function ran. And this is the last backtick that we created uh, just after our implode function. Everything in between was the was the value 
that's separated by this. So backtick, comma, backtick, backtick, comma, backtick. And then we have the last result and then our final backtick. So that's how we build up this code. Now that's not all we need to do. We need to define the, the values. And in this case, this is just gonna be the values here. At the moment, they're null. So what do we wanna do with the back the values? Well, we just want a list of um, uh, of question marks. So there are quicker ways to do this, but let's just look at this in a sort of a simpler way since we're delving into sort of tricky territory here. We want to say for each fields as field, so we're looping through the fields that we've defined in our function or our method. We want to say values dot equals question mark. So we're basically adding a question mark to each uh, to this values which will eventually be a string so I guess we could just define that as a string there um, what we're then going to do is we're going to check if um, x is going to be the counter is greater than or, e uh, or is less than the count of the fields so we're going to increment x down here and then we're going to create an if statement here to check if x is less than the count of fields now this perhaps looks a bit complicated but all we're saying is are we at the end of the, the fields that we've defined. Now, if we're not, if we are not, we want to add a, a, a comma onto these uh, values. So values dot equals comma and a space. Um, let's just define these in single quotes just to make things a bit more consistent. So let's go ahead and just die values here. Um, so you'll see that we get question mark, question mark, question mark, separated by comma. Um, obviously, if we didn't have this check in place here, we would end up with just three question marks. And if we had a comma here and didn't have this, we would just end up with uh, a comma on the end of that. That's why we did that. And like I said, there are easier ways to do, or not easy ways, but um, shorter ways to do this. But we'll leave it as this for now, just so it makes a little bit more sense. So we've now got our full query. Um, let's just take a look at how that looks. It looks like this. Perfect. So this is a perfectly valid query as long as we're binding these question marks um, as, as actual values that we want to insert. And that's not hard because we already have the functionality for that. So we're going to say if um, this query SQL, we've already built up the SQL and we're then just going to pass in the fields and they all have values, so they'll be bound to the question marks that we've already created. And we wanna say if not error. So if that doesn't error, we return true. Um, otherwise we're returning false down here anyway, so we can just leave it as it is. So now when we actually run this, this is going to insert the data that we require, hopefully. So it will insert a username, a password, and a salt. So let's give it a go. There we go. Um, we, we obviously don't get any signifying back whether this didn't work or not, because all we're doing is returning true or false, but we can prove that it works or not by looking inside of our database. And you can see here that in fact, it has actually worked. We've inserted uh, a record at Dale, uh, a username with Dale, password and salt here. Uh, no other information because it's not relevant just yet. And that's basically it. That's how we are going to insert data. And we could of course say if um, user insert, change this to insert, uh, then we'll assume that's a success because this returns true or false. So let's go ahead now and look on to similar functionality and this is basically deleting from our database. So we're just basically going to uh, almost use the same, um, almost use the, the same functionality um, oh, sorry, no, update, I mean. <laughs> we're going to use the same functionality, but we're going to update data. And we're going to define an additional field just here. And that's going to be the ID of the user that we want to update. Um, so we're going to say, uh, let's take a look in our database. We're going to delete this record we've just created, which is of ID 3. So we'll go ahead and define this as three so we want to update the users table where the uh, user ID is three or the ID of the record is three and we're going to set the password to new password just as an example again this is plain text we will um, we will hash this but for now we'll just keep it as simple as possible so uh, we need a new method 
and that is going to be update. Now luckily we're going to borrow a lot of the functionality from this so uh, we don't need to do too much work here. We know that we want to update a table, we know we want to update a specific ID, and we know that we want to update a particular set of fields. Um, so what we're also going to do now is set a variable called set um, to an empty string. Um, and in fact, we, we've, we've created a count here of fields. We're not really taking into account whether a table's been defined. So I'm just going to remove this here. It doesn't it doesn't really matter that much unless you are um, very uh, strict on how developers using this need to be told what, what what's required or not. Um, there are a variety of checks we can put in place to make sure that these, um, these arguments or parameters are passed through to the function. But let's try and keep things a little bit more simple. So I'm going to say set equals an empty string and x equals 1. Again, we're going to be incrementing uh, this x variable for each of the fields that we have. So let's go ahead and begin with our uh, our query. How do we update a user or a table in our database? Well, we update a certain um, a certain table, and we set something. So we set perhaps password equal to new password, and we do that where the ID equals certain ID so in this case it'll be three now we could of course include some where clause array in here and it, it, it sort of uh, implement that into here for now we're just gonna assume that our update function only ever needs to work with an ID um, you can of course make this more flexible but just for the purpose of the tutorial just to keep things simple we'll keep this as an ID so now obviously this query is no good because we don't just want our update uh, method to update where an ID equals three we want to be able to define this so the first thing that we want to do is uh, be able to update a particular table that's very straightforward uh, let's just uh, well you don't need don't need quotes for that. Uh, set is going to be the result of building up the set string that we're going to build up here in a moment. And where is going to be where ID equals ID. So the only thing we need to do now is build up this set uh, string based on the fields that we've been passed through to this function. So again, we just need a for each loop. And we're going to say for each fields as name value. And inside of here, we're going to say set um, dot equals. So we're basically concatenating on um, a string. And this string is going to be name. So the name of the field. So password equals. And then we're going to have question mark. So we're going to bind these still. We always want to bind because we don't want this data. So, you know, look at it from this way. If a user's updating their profile and they enter their username, uh, enter a new email address or a new uh, full name, for example, their, their actual name, we this data is going to be passed straight to this update method. So we don't want a user to, to start SQL injecting here. So we're always going to include question marks. Um, we're going to include more or less the same functionality as well. We increment X each time and we're going to say if X X is less than or equal to the count of the fields array that we've passed in we want to do set dot equals a comma so let's go ahead again and die on this set variable just to see all this string just to see what this looks like password equals zero we know that you know that's what we expect to be updated if we were to add for example another thing here and say email uh, or not email let's say name equals Dale Garrett, then when we refresh, uh, it's again it says name equals. In fact, we are missing a space there. It doesn't really matter, but just to keep things neat and tidy. So these are the fields that are going to be updated. And obviously, as part of the overall query, these are going to look like the following. So let's echo the query out just to make sure it looks like a valid query. So we're updating the users table. We're setting password equal to a particular value that we're going to bind, name equal to a particular value that we're going to bind, and I, where the ID is equal to three. Perfectly valid query. This will work. So now all we need to do is probably, you've already guessed, actually um, perform the query. So we just say exactly the same thing. If this query, so if the query of the SQL 
with the bound values of the fields. Remember, they'll replace um, the um, the uh, question marks. So if that doesn't work, um, if or sorry, if that doesn't return an error, we want to return true. It's basically what we've done here. We're, we're basically duplicating that line. Otherwise, at the worst case, we want to return false. So let's go ahead and check this out uh, and see if this actually works. Uh, let me just go ahead and change this to something like Dale Barrett. Um, so what we're expecting now is uh, Dale uh, or password to be updated to new password and name to be updated to Dale Barrett. In actual case, in actual fact, let's change this back to Garrett because there's no name as it stands. So let's go and run our code, see what happens. There we go. I'll assume that this works, but I'll, I'll check my database just to make sure. And there we go. We've updated the password field to new password, and we've updated the name to the name that we've just defined. So that is all we need to do in our database wrapper. There is a lot of functionality in here, but like we've already looked at, this now gives us the flexibility to do everything we need to do inside of our application.